I am going to say this very clearly at the beginning. If you are the type of person that places a tremendous amount of your passion in the in-ring components of professional wrestling, if you're somebody that really geeks out for the matches and the moves within said matches, then you probably really, really enjoyed this week's episode of Dynamite. Because it certainly had plenty of the stuff that you would absolutely love. No doubt about it. Punk working a long match against Bobby Fish. The women's match with Sheeta and Deeb. Like, I could go on and on. It had plenty of that. The TNT Championship. Like, yeah. Even the main event to some degree because of the big reveal. Like, some of those same things that some of you value probably a lot, I don't value quite as much, and that's okay. I found things enjoyable on this show, too. It just might be different. Sometimes we can enjoy things in different ways, but still enjoy them. But it was a decent effort. Wasn't really rewarded in the ratings, and I can't wait to hear all the excuses about why the ratings were a little soft this week. Uh, but they were soft. So maybe, just maybe, and I'd like to throw this out there as a proposal, that uh, maybe Tony Khan could sit down, shut the fuck up a little, and focus on putting out the best shows that he could do every week. Stop shit-talking on Twitter. Stop. Stop. Focusing on anything to do with WWE. That's dumb. Put all of your energy, efforts, and resources into how you make AEW the best possible product you could be. You know, like, hey, instead of being a punk-ass bitch trying to pretend like you're competing against WWE when you don't have the balls to do so, like actually show that you want to compete, but do it in your own way. Like, hey, have Rampage actually be a live show instead of doing the cowardly tape shit. Just throwing that out there. Anyways, let's talk about this week's Dynamite. The opener was CM Punk and Bobby Fish. Again, this is where we're going to probably divest in our opinions. A lot of you are going to love this because it was Punk and Bobby Fish going almost 20 minutes, which is exactly why I fucking hated this match. Bobby Fish should not be getting almost 20 minutes of TV time here. This is stupid. You could have done a lot of the same crap in eight or nine minutes and got the fuck out. It went way too goddamn long. There still is really no point or purpose in CM Punk. And you could be trying to stretch and grasp and reach for shit, but no. You don't invest the amount of money they clearly had to invest in CM Punk for him to fucking randomly wrestle a Bobby Fish. Like, that's stupid. Let's focus on competition, like... Come up with something better for one of your biggest gate attractions. It's not that hard. It really isn't. And he shouldn't have to struggle with a nobody like Bobby Fish. And compared to CM Punk, Bobby Fish is a nobody. A lot of you liked it. I thought it was stupid. I got infinitely more value out of the next segment, which was MJF Quickly squashing a jobber. How novel is that? Don't even let the other person get in the offense. Fuck that. You get a spot. Fuck this. Anything. Fuck this. I'll make you look good too. No. Get in, get out, and get the fuck on with it. And you'll notice. You'll notice. When MJF was running his mouth. Sting ain't selling your attack, brother. He's pissed off that you took away his opportunity at CM Punk at Bound for Glory, dude. He's going to get you. The whole thing with Sting and then Darby Allen? I'm sorry, like, I was much more excited for this than I was CM Punk versus Bobby Fish. Because now you actually are talking about something that has a story. Two characters that the fans actually give a shit. One half of the marble white pillars of AEW, if you will, but... Yeah, this was this was a really good segment. Got more heat on MJF. Had the big sting return, the Darby Allen return, like this was well executed. And the match for the TNT championship between Sammy Guevara and Ethan Page was cool. It was relatively well executed. You know, it was solid. Sammy Guevara retains and leads to the beatdown with Scorpio Sky coming in and out comes the rest of Inner Circle. And if we're going to have Chris Jericho run in and do the save, like let's actually have him run in and do the save. If you got to sit there and do pyro and his entrance music for a fucking run-in, then just have the pyro and the entrance music do the damn run-in. And that was so ridiculous. 
Wrestling's gonna wrestling. I'm I'm just saying. Um, but yeah, you're building up towards now a five on five tag match, the Inner Circle versus America Top Team. Okay, cool. Give me more Dan Lambert mic time. Thank you very much. Hikaru Shida versus Serena Deeb. This was a TBS tournament match, so at least this match had some purposes. The only real knock I have about this match is two things. One, and probably by far the best match I've seen Shida have, and just another example of how great of a talent I think Serena Deeb is. But the two things that bother me about this, number one, is it did descend into the place that I would have expected it to descend. It's like, you keep having to go and keep having to go, and uh, can you top this, and oh, this false finish, oh, this near fall, geared towards the melters of the fucking world, and... Like, sometimes you can get away with that, and sometimes that's okay. Like, it was a little much here. The second thing, and this just might be a personal preference or opinion, the whole thing about Sheeta being the first to get to 50 wins, like, why have to have her win here? The crowd popped and everything, but did you have to? Like, you set this up, and then no time later, you just basically dismissed it. But the chemistry between these two ladies is fantastic in the ring. This has easily got to be one of the very best women's matches in AEW since the company's inception. I challenge you to name three that were better. I challenge you to name two that are better. And maybe there is, and I'm just forgetting stuff, but this match was fantastic. It really was. Like I said, got a little too much of the type of shit that I don't like. I wish I would have had Deeb one, but win, but it was really, really good. John Moxley versus 10, like... Having Moxley just be this bite-your-face-off psycho, I guess, is cool, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> it was quick, and it was over, and that's about all I can say about that. And, of course, Cody Cena, trying to sit there and be his insecure ass. The reason he doesn't want to turn heel is because he can't stand the fact that this group of AEW fans might potentially hate him when they already do. And he's so caught up in his own ego and so caught up in his own bullshit, not kayfabe, real life, that he can't believe that people will want to boo him. And you could try and use Arn Anderson as a fucking prop all you want, but you are not a likable person, Cody. And it is time to own that and accept that. And you can see it again, he just wants to be AEW Cena. No matter what, they boo or cheer and get a reaction type of shit, like... You're supposed to be better than this. Your company is supposed to be better than this. Stop that. The best thing that Andrade has done his entire whack-ass AEW run is when he came out and shut Cody Rhodes the fuck up. Hell yeah, I was down with that. And you got Malachi Black coming out like that's still going to be a thing? Pop comes out like that comes out, yeah. Like, <sighs> Cody is so fucking annoying. I don't see how anybody could boo him. Like, what, what are the redeeming qualities? There aren't any. I'm going to try to be my own man, but I always throw out there my wife, my brother, my daddy, and like, give me a fucking break. P pandering on a pathetic scale. And some of you, I'm sure, are going to look at me and assume that I thought the main event with the Dark Order and the Elite in costume was pathetic and corny and stupid. And I'll say this. Sometimes wrestling is at its best when it's kind of pathetic, corny, and stupid. Is it not? Is it not? Not everything has to be a knockdown, 30-minute technical Dean Malenko classic, goddammit. Now, does the elite's type of humor connect or land with me in most cases? Absolutely not. But it's not for me, and that's okay. I guess. Uh, but the match wasn't much, and I'm sure the match itself isn't exactly something that the hardcore AEW fans particularly cared for. Like, they're like, well, they put this out as the main event. I wonder your viewership was shit this week. But goddamn, I tell you what, the close to this, like I tweeted right before it happened, I'm like, the Skate Puff Marshmallow Man has to be Hangman Page. And when you got to that point and the camera was zoomed in perfectly and you got whichever one of the bucks of sucks it was and then you get the big reveal it's like, oh, wait, it's Brandon Cutler and the horse, so who the fuck is in the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man costume? And he lifts his head up and it's Hangman Page. That place lost its shit. Absolutely lost its shit. Because they care about Hangman Page. 
People are emotionally invested in the character. They care about what the hell he's doing. They want to see him win the AEW world title. All the 20, 30 minute spot heavy matches in the world can't stack up to what you saw in that main event. Like when you think about closes to shows that are going to excite you, when you think about main events that make you feel like, God damn, I wish I would have been there to experience that. That reveal by Hangman Page felt like some big league shit type of stuff. That's the stuff you, stuff you would have expected back in the day, maybe like an Austin to do. I'm going to dress up as a cameraman and then I'm going to do the slow reveal like, yeah, this shit worked and it connected. You could say, well, it was part of this stupid main event. Do you know what? Who gives a shit? Because it made Hangman Page look like a million goddamn bucks here. And that's what the hell matters. Like you're setting him up to be the dude. Whether or not he'll truly be the dude remains to be seen. But you're setting him up that way. And you feature him in spots like this? Yeah. The fans are going to be really chomping at the bit and really ready for it. You can sense now they are ready for it. And when you do things like this, it only helps in that. But it is an important lesson in if you can get the people that watch to care about the characters and to care about the stories, the matches are easy. The matches are secondary. Anything you do in the matches just adds to it. This is the type of stuff that we need to see more out of AEW. This is the type of character development, the storytelling that we need to see. That a lot of you claim is there on a consistent basis and the reality is it just fucking isn't. There are certainly some feuds that are really notable. Absolutely. But there is a lot of filler crap on their show. If you're going to do two hours live every Wednesday night, everything should matter and have a purpose. And not everything does. Like CM Punk versus Bobby Fish. You're throwing that out there. But that's weak-ass programming, especially when you're anticipating the opener might be the strongest segment of your show. You need to do something better with CM Punk. That's pathetic and should be called out as such. And your wrestling Christ, Tony Khan, isn't quite the genius that a lot of you make him out to be. Sometimes. But then you've got stuff like this and you say to yourself, man, that was incredibly well put together. You had to deal with some of the corny stupidity to get there, but when you got there, man, you could feel it, you could sense it, you could believe it, feel it. Mm. So like I said, there were things that I enjoyed about Dynamite this week. It was a very easy, very quick watch. Do right by your most important characters, and the rest of the show kind of falls into place.